Jamal Myers here with the very dapper Johnny Nelson here at the Smith vs Leggington <laughs> press conference. Jeez, talk me through this outfit, man. Yeah, you've got to drop it because we're in the middle of winter and summer. Oh, yeah. So it looks like true. it's warm. You get outside, you're freezing your balls off. So in my head, I'm thinking, I've got to drop a bit of style. That, that is actually genius. <laughs> talk to me about that press conference, man. I don't think anyone thought Price and I'll even going to go over Which that. is nice, which is nice. And the thing is, I think uh, Cash Alley has probably made a vital mistake. He, if he thinks the David Price you've seen lose six times, turned off six times, is a David Price he'll be fine. It's completely different because familiarity breeds content. So David Price is used to cash out, they spar together, they know, they know each other, they know what each other's capabilities. So the, the reason why David Price has fallen to pieces before is because when he's got tired and that, that panic sets in, you think, has he got more left than me? But he knows cash out, he knows what he's capable of doing. That's not going to happen. Now cash has got fast hands, he's a good moving slip. Yeah, and he is, I know cash because he used to train at our gym. I sparred with him, I thought, you know what, you've got good hands, but you don't believe in what you can do. And that's where the problem is. Whereas David Price, David Price can punch, but David Price is class. So the only thing that's let David Price down in the past is that. Not that. And so once that's intact, once that's on point, that David Price will, will not be beaten. That's why he knocked out the likes of Anthony Joshua. That's why he, he, he beat the likes of Tyson Fury in the past. Because he can box. That is all David Price's problem is. That won't be a problem from Saturday night. And Cash Allen needs to get that out of his head. So he's got to depend on his fast hands, timing, and every time he's everything. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Do you, do you think now that that happened, you know, obviously no one is, was expecting that war of words to happen, but you saw Price leave with a bit of a grin on his face. He feels like he might have had a small win in that moment. Yeah, without a doubt. Words is always a, always a win, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, without a doubt, because, because, because Price has probably been very PC in the past. Mm. I'm not saying this, I'm not saying that. So, but Price is thinking, I've got nothing to lose. I can say what the fuck I want. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, you're, you're smiling. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's nice to see, though, isn't it? It's nice. It's nice to see him being himself. Yeah. And I think that'll make a massive difference. And obviously, two fighters who have no problem being themselves: Fitzgerald um, and Fowler. I think the problem there is familiarity, again, uh, with those two. Those two were friends. Those two know each other. They know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And, and with that being, you know, Fallon knows what to say to Fitzgerald to wind up and vice versa. And so in doing that, um, uh, these two know how to bully each other, how to turn each other's switches on. I think Fallon's cool, uh, he's mature, whereas Fitzgerald is, is, is a, a bit of a, an erratic character. He's yeah. obsessed with Fallon this week. So being obsessed with Fallon this week, you know, people think, you know, God, there's a problem. There ain't no problem. That's just like their styles, that's how they do it. Fitzgerald looked like, you know, at certain periods that press conference, he looked he was, he was ready to go. Yeah, he did, yeah. And, and, but, but you, you do that to try and make your point think, you look, I'm, I'm ready. Mm. But that's nervous energy and you'll blow yourself up after three or four rounds, so you've got to be careful with that. Yeah. So, so today was the last chance they could actually speak to each other and say what they want to say. Because when it comes to the weighing tomorrow, you're simply gonna you're simply gonna strip off getting the scales. You might mumble one or two things that might be not very PC. Then you're off. So today was the last day they could actually say something. And rounding off that press conference, you know, obviously cool, calm, and collected. Liam Smith and Sam Eggington. Yeah. Not much to say from either side, really. No, not Everyone at all. Because these the guys will do it all in the ring. Yeah. These guys are, are are they don't need to be be, be, be any bad blood because they know what sparring's like, they know it doesn't have to get emotionally that, that emotionally charged. So these guys know what they're gonna do. Uh, there's, no, there's no love lost when the bell goes, but they don't need to put emotion, attach emotion to it. Yeah. It's been an interesting week for boxing news in general, you know, with yeah. the announcements of Billy Joe Saunders and Tyson Fury's fights with the Frank Warren side yeah. of things. Yeah. And Wilder as well. Obviously. Alexander Usyk fighting uh, Carlos Takam. Yeah, uh, that, that's all again. Yeah, and, and Eddie Hearn is just saying that uh, 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 Usyk's next fight, if he beats that Takam, could be AJ. Yeah. You never know. So that, that was an awesome fight. Yeah, two gold medalists doing it. Just the front ones, though. I think they've been met with a bit of disappointment. You know, Billy Joe Saunders fighting it in Stevenage and Fury fighting a, a guy that many casual fans won't be aware of in Las Vegas. What are your thoughts on that? Well, as a fighter, you think I just want to fight. Uh, Frank Rowan was the king of the big shows at one point. He was the king of the massive arena shows. Times change, and that's how now it is. And uh, so he's got to get an opportunity when opportunities, opportunities come around. Um, I'm quite sure the opportunities will come again uh, for these fight, for, for the fighters. And, uh, and never write Frank Warren off. Frank Warren knows the game inside out. 
uh, he'll just make the most of what he's got. He'll take it he while he's got to take it. But they'll come back with something. He always does. Because there have been a few clashes like lately in the past few months between Matchrooms and yeah, Bad putting Boy fights on the same night because Matchroom know. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, I do. As a fight fan, yeah, of course, because I'm spoiled for choice. Mm. Uh, and so, so it's show business, and it's, it's usually the business that messes up the show. So fighters want to fight each other. The business side of it, you know, he wants X, he wants Y. That's that messes it up. The fighters want to fight each other. If you're a fight fan, you love boxing. You are spoiled, and and we don't realise how good we got it right now because everybody's showing boxing. You're working in the business yourself. Maybe some people on the outside will think, oh. You know, you're at fights every week, maybe you'll take it for granted, but what you just said oh, there, I love my job. Still, you, no, yeah, I don't consider it as a job. I got, the, I got the best job in the world mm. because I talk about something I love, something I was, uh, it's something that I, I made a living out of, or something I just think I love being around these people. You know, and so to me, I, I, I can think as a fan and as an ex fighter. Yeah. And so to me, I think we all win. And, and, and we complain about not getting certain things in certain fights but you know what at least we're getting something yeah exactly. you know and we're getting the big shows we're getting the big fights we're, we're filling Wembley out 90,000 people yeah. not just once you know what I mean we um, nearly a year of tradition that's what now, I'm saying so, yeah. so to me I think look how boxing's changed at one point we were fighting in legend centres up and down the country I like that coat thank you my brother I was brother. just saying nice you, you can show yours as well to be fair show mine Paris. well I'll so show you mine good. you show me yours sexual yeah. chat these are the fashion chat, maestros right. of the boxing <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to say stuff like that. I can. I know, I know I can. <laughs> but only to each other. Yeah. Yes. That's a lovely coat. Images, no, I'm going to really. get out of the way. What are you trying to say? I'm, no, I'm saying they compliment me. Ebony and other. Ivory, salt and <laughs> pepper. I'd sing, man, but you know what I mean? I don't want to feel a lot. No, Very but it's a, it's a lovely jacket, yeah. <laughs> oh, stop it, will you? Could you want to come and be the third wheel? <laughs> you see, roll between two thoughts. Everybody's again. joining us in See, we're all in a yeah, yeah. quick, quick smile. <laughs> You're really grabbing at my oh, waist. Sorry, I'm just pulling you in. That was all. <laughs> Doesn't mean pulling in anymore. Just, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm in the way here. Sorry. <laughs> Is this so, really so, something I'm not? We're in yeah, the middle yeah, of an interview. Hi, guys. I'm Melissia. <laughs> and I'm Gareth. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs> Johnny, before we let you go, man, this is turning something I wasn't really expecting. Um, Fight news, just in general, outside, yeah. it kind of connects to the world of boxing. Yeah. Conor McGregor retired from MMA. Again? Do you expect, well, yeah, again, exactly. So people are kind of. Never say never because yeah. when fighters retire, when you're a fighter, it's always in you. When you've had a bit of time off and the pressure's off from fighting, you miss it and you think, nah, I'm coming back again. Conor McGregor's got a lot of stuff going on outside the ring, I think. The biggest kiss and the biggest kiss was his massive purse he got against Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. It changed his lifestyle, it changed his hunger, it changed his desire. And it's hard to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning when, you win, when you're wearing silk pyjamas. Yeah. And, uh, and, and no matter how much they'll protest and say it doesn't, hasn't made any difference, it makes a difference. Uh, and because once, you, once you've got that, once you've achieved that, it's very hard to motivate yourself. Conor McGregor has been great for the sport of MMA. Uh, he's been a character. He's made, made people that didn't know anything about it pay attention to it. And so you've got to give him credit where credit's due. No matter what you think of him, love him or love him, he's put eyes on the prize. He's made people think about the sport. Do you think a boxing is here? You know, because the way he's worded it, yeah. you know, people in the boxing world have thought, well, maybe that means that he's opening the door to return to... Uh, 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 a fight boxing. against a boxer. Malinage, yeah, yeah, of Mayweather. course. Yeah. That's a big fight. That's yeah. a big fight. And it's a winnable fight. And so, uh, so, so and you get certain fights that get to a stage where they'll give up a title because they think, right, well, I'm going to go for the big, big, big money fights. Uh, and uh, that might be it. Would you not be nudging Eddie and just saying, you know what, match room, come on, let's throw him a few. You know what, realistically, I'm too old for that, man. I'm 52 <laughs> years old and my head says I can do it, my body says you ain't doing shit. <laughs> so uh, I've got to be, be, be realistic. All right, Johnny, it's always a pleasure speaking to you, man. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that.